welcome to The Voice of Jesus. My name is Randolph Kubitschek, and in this program, we're going to look at choices. The Bible says that today we can choose. We can choose either life or death, blessing or cursing. And in this world today, in such a materialistic, idolatry world, people are making wrong choices. You know, through all this pandemic, we can see that people are starting to weigh, up their, li weigh, up, weigh their life up, do an inventory of their lives to see what's really happening and how they're prepared for things. You know, most people aren't prepared. A lot of people just panic. Actually, Jesus even said, he said, if you worry, how, how can it add a cubic to your stature? So worrying's not going to help. Fear's not going to help. Anxiety's not going to help. But by the way you think and the way you choose in your life is going to help. So it's the matter of what you're going to choose. In the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 30, I want to go there, and today's message is, today you can choose. And I want to go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 30, from verse 15. And it says here, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. Throughout all our life, we're going to be making choices, good or bad. You know, you never make a good choice when you're emotionally disturbed. You never make a, a good choice, for example, when you're in anger or you have resentment. The decisions we have to make today have to be balanced decisions. They have to be right decisions. My thing was, and what I learned in business, was good information makes good decisions. So you need the right information to make the right decisions. Now, here's the information that's God giving to his people. He's saying, listen, I'm going to give you a choice. Today, today, he says, life and good or death and evil. It's a choice. And it's, it comes by many different ways. By the way we think, the way we talk, the way we're getting information, what we're looking at. Think about this. The things that you think about the most, you become. As a man thinketh, in his heart, so shall he be. be. That's in Proverbs 23, 7. Verse 16. It says, In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Now, you might think, well, what's that land? Could that be heaven? Could that be somewhere else? No, it's the land where you are at the moment. It's, it's, your, it's your territory. You know, this world is actually, it's, it's a, quite a small world when you think about it, how we can travel. I travel a lot, so the world does become very small. But God is saying in your own, own household, we need to start in our own household. And I say that by, if you're a, father or a husband, you need to lead and guide your family with the right leadership. You need to teach your children the word. You need to learn to pray with them. You need to learn to love and cherish and respect your wife. They're the things God's commanded us to do. Yet we have so many divorces, so many broken families, so many orphans. Just look at the result of the world today. That's because of bad choices, evil. People did not choose life and good they choose they chose death and evil but we can change that this is the good thing about it you see god's a merciful god the bible says in psalm 136 his mercy endures forever in psalm 145 verses 7 to 8 it says that he's slow to anger full of compassion full of patience full of grace and that's what he can do to you today he can give you a second chance and you might say well it's all it's all gone no the God we serve is a God of the second chance, the third chance, the millionth chance. You may fall seven times, but the Lord's going to pick you up every single time when you fall from grace. Do you know why? Because He loves us. And do you know also why? Because He's shown His grace towards us. Even whilst we were still sinners, He still died for us. He said, listen, you don't deserve it, but what I want to do is I want to give you a second chance. Will you follow me? Will you choose me? That is the question we're going to ask today to ourselves and to everybody else in this world. What are we going to choose? Who are we going to choose? And he says here, the condition was, was this. If, if you 
Keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments. God will make you live, multiply and bless you and possess those things which he wants you to possess, not what so much you want to possess. We know that in Psalm 37 verses 4 it says that, and Psalm 20 verse 5 it says, trust in the Lord with all our heart and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Sure, those desires, if they're lined up with God's word, God will give you those. It might be you need health, you need a good marriage, a good job, uh, obedient children, whatever. God will supply those needs, but under this condition, if you follow him. You know, we've had, there's a lot of hypocrisy in this world. You know, I used to travel to the old age homes or hospitals and pray for people. People used to tell me, I'm an atheist, I'm a communist, I don't believe in God. But they wanted me to pray for them. And they begged God, literally begged God for their lives. Nobody likes to die. But they were not sure about where they're going to go. They were not sure that they, through this whole process, that somebody's going to be with them. You know, we have that promise when Jesus said, he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. That's a promise you can have right up until the last breath. God is with me. And that is a good comfort to know. We need to know that. There's hope in that. But as people are and human nature is, they become hard-hearted. They become people that, well, God is God, will do it all. They'll, they start to barter. They start to do business with God. Well, God, if you do this, I'll do that. And God, through his grace, sets them free and saves them or heals them or sets them from the, 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 the doors of death. And yet, a few weeks later, they go back into their old ways. That was the children of Israel. In verse 17, it says, But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear, and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. You see, he's, he's giving us a choice again. It's like in the beginning, uh, um, life and good, death and evil. Obey me and I'll bless you. But he's saying here, now here's the other condition. If you turn <laughs> and you keep in your old ways, you know, the, the, the worst sin in this world is idolatry. We put everything else in first place but God. We worship our house, our cars, we worship our phones, we worship everything else. And you might say, well, that's the world. What would you expect of the world? Well, do you know what? It's happening in the Christian world. Um, I think what God, what abhors God mostly is religion. Think about it. When Jesus was walking this earth, the major people he had problems with was the religious people, the people who were self-righteous, the people who thought that, well, we know we've got it right. And I was just reading it today in uh, Matthew 23, when the Pharisees, they like to sit at the head of the banquet table. They like to walk with these long robes. They like to be greeted in, in, the, in their marketplaces, in their synagogues, being called rabbi. And Jesus says, hypocrites, you hypocrites. You know, there's a lot of hypocrisy in this world. And unfortunately, it's also in the church. And we can't, we can't deny that. What God is saying for us today is for us to return to God with our whole heart and our whole soul. Everything that we've got. One of the greatest prayers we can pray is say, Lord, all I am and all I have, I give to you, Lord. It's yours. I surrender to you today. I lay everything at your feet. God, take this away from me. And you might say, well, what are these? What can I surrender? Well, you know what? You can surrender yourself. Maybe there's, you're bound by some vice. Maybe you haven't got set free from those things. You need deliverance. Do you know what? You don't need somebody to cast out a demon. All you need to do is say, Lord God, I'm going to surrender my life. I want to surrender my life. I want to follow you. You know, it's not so much by what we do. It's by what he did, which is more important. He's the one who paid the price for sin. He's the one who, who ultimately took everything upon himself. While you and me should have paid that price, we should have went to that cross, which was one of the probably the most horrendous ways of persecution and death. So it's really torturing persecution by death, which is the cross. But yeah, there's good news. Jesus took it upon him, self, that we may be set free. And all we've got to do today is say, Lord Jesus, 
I come to you. I can't trust in myself anymore. I can't trust in the, in the government. I can't trust in, in people or things or places. I have to trust you. And maybe you're in that place today in such a, as everybody is in this quarantine or, or staying at home or this lockdown, and you're saying to yourself, Lord, what do I do? What am I going to do? I just lost my job. My business is going down. My health is deteriorating through the stress and the worry. Good news. He loves you. And he's saying to you here in verse 17, he says, but turn from your wicked ways. God wants us to turn from our wicked ways of doing things. And you might say, well, I'm, not, I'm a good person. I'm, I haven't killed anybody. I haven't stolen. If I told you this, that none of these sins, that if you've ever committed and you've forgiven and you've been forgiven, you repent from your sins, none of those sins are going to take you to hell. The only sin that's going to take you to hell is rejecting Jesus Christ. If you read John 3, 16 and 17, 18, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever shall believe in him shall have eternal life. But it goes further. But those who do not believe, or in some translation, reject him, are already condemned. So people are already condemned because their unbelief, their doubt, their non-acceptance of Jesus being their Lord. So that's really important. Now, uh, I got another a few points here I want to discuss here also. Is that the problem that we have today, and I'm talking about now within the church, there's so much religion, so much compromised Christianity, pseudo Christianity, false Christianity. God is sick and tired of us playing church. God is sick and tired of us having these programs, these agendas, all about self, promoting self. Now, I'm not against people promoting their books, if they've got really good books to write out there and it edifies Jesus Christ, it lines up with God's Word, no problems. But when it comes all about self and what you do and how good you are, how big you are, how many people you've got in your church, you know, I've passed it for many years and, and the first thing that people say is, how many people in your church? And I said, well, 50 to 500. They don't look at me. Well, I said, well, we started at 50. We're going to go to 500 now. Whether we go to 500, we don't go to 500. It doesn't make any difference. The number does not have any significance. Listen, there's no safety in numbers. There's churches out there with tens of thousands of people in their church. And I can tell you that what I know of, a lot of them are not born again. A lot of them are just churchgoers. That they feel that... that feel good Sunday churchgoer and yet they don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ they don't know the word of God they're not filled with God's spirit they're not upbraiding in the fruits and the gifts of the, of the spirit so we can categorize now who are the real people of God it's those who will go after the Lord with all their heart all their soul all their strength all their might all their spirit within them and say Lord I want to follow you you know I was, I was raised as a young Catholic boy, and uh, I knew about God when I was about four years old, I was already in school. But I had this re incredible relationship with the Lord. It was, it was amazing. I mean, at the age of four, I knew God. I really knew God. I, I remember at, at age five, six, I used to lie, be on my knees before I went to bed every night, and I used to pray. I knew Him. I had this great relationship with Him. Yet, I was taught a religious Jesus. But when I was 16, that all changed. I met the real Jesus. I met the healer. I met the deliverer. I met the Savior. And that changed my life. But then later on in my years, I didn't get the baptism of the Holy Spirit until 1995. And when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, then that changed everything. I was not a wishy-washy Christian. I was not a Sunday Christian. I was not one of those hypocrites. You see, I chose... I chose to follow God. I chose to know Him more. My choice was, God, I want to know you more. That was it. I remember being in, um, in uh, the USA. It was in Virginia. And I was preaching in a church there. And somebody said to me, look, Randolph, let's go to this meeting. It's a great meeting. It's, um, 
uh, there's a very big camp camp meeting there and there was this woman that that uh, or this sort of this this uh, preacher lady came out and I thought well we're going to hear some really good preaching because I heard about this woman and it was all the miracles are incredible and all she did was for the whole service was just say Lord I want to know you more Lord just just reveal yourself to us we want to know you more I want to seek your presence I want to seek your face I just want to know you more and I thought it just got a bit boring after a while but all of a sudden about 15 20 minutes later the presence and the anointing of God hit that place People wept. People fell out under the Spirit. People got healed. The miracles that was happening was just unbelievable. They just wanted to know God. You see, that's who He is. That's His nature. He's a God who shows up. God God loves us and He wants to show us His love. And He'll show us His love any which way He wants to. Healing, touching us, touching our heart, changing our, 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 our whole inner being, giving us a second chance. So, in verse 18... So you know what I'm saying is here, let's not play religion anymore. Let's just get to know him. Let, let's put all the stuff aside. You know, we have a, I mean, it's quite amazing. Church services today are so well programmed in time. We have our praise and worship, we have our names, we have our preaching, we have our blessing, we pray and we go home. Is that really the church that Jesus is looking for? I, I don't know about that. I, d- I don't see that role model in the church, in in the, in the Bible. <laughs> I see a little bit different to that. And I'm not saying don't go to church. Go to church. Don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. Um, Hebrews 10.25 Go to church. Be part of it. But you can change things too. Verse 18 I announce you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go and possess. You know what he's saying here? He's saying, listen, if you want long life, peace, prosperity, fulfill your number of your days. He's saying, be obedient. Because he's saying here, if you're not going to do what I tell you to do, you're going to perish. And you'll perish in your sins. Now there's something to live 70, 80, 90 years on this earth. But to live in eternity, in hell, to live in damnation, or for the for, for the for eternity, for, for the rest of your, your whole life, Life, I mean, it's eternity. It's, it, it just goes on forever. You don't want that. Now, today is the day of salvation. Today you choose. Today you can say, I want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. And I'm going to repent of my sins. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to help me today. You see, you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it on your own, in your own self-righteousness and strength. It's impossible. That's why we need a saviour. Jesus' mother Mary, she needed a saviour. All the apostles and and the disciples, they needed a saviour. Everyone needs a saviour. Everyone. What are you going to say? Well, Randall, what are we saving you from? Well, I'm going to tell you what. Number one, you're saving, he's going to save you from yourself. Because the worst enemy in your life is probably you. Two, he's going to save you from a fiery hell. Now, I'm not the one who's preaching fire and brimstone and that you know turn or burn no i don't believe that we, we we i preach the love and the grace of god showing that god's a good god god wants through his love and his grace turn you from that and say listen there's a better place if you go to um um uh, john chapter 14 verse 1 he says he says um so don't you know i i go to prepare a place for you in my, in my father's house, there are, there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so. And I go now to prepare a place for you. You know what? He's already prepared that place for you. If you're born again, if you're a child of God, you're filled with God's love and his spirit, and you're doing what he's telling you to do, you got a place to go to. That's why you don't have to fear death. <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, I just want you to think on that. Verse 19. And he says, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I set before you life and death. He set life and death before us, blessing and cursing. He's saying, look, it's it's here. It's the choice, this one or this one. It's not difficult. Listen, maybe you think to yourself, well, there's time. 
No, there isn't time. Do you know, God showed me the day and the hour, but it was only by His grace my father would die. The day and literally the hour he would die. And he was in hospital at the time, but he was, he was, he was, he was perfectly healthy. He was just up there for a check. And um, they were monitoring him. And the Lord woke me up at 6.30 in the morning and says, take your Bible and go to, the, go to the intensive care unit. Now, they don't normally let you in on the intensive care unit at 6.30 in the morning because it's doctor's visits and all the other stuff. But you know what? I was obedient to God. I rocked up there with my Bible. And the main doctor there, who knew me, he said, oh, Mr. Kubitschek. I said, yes. He saw with my Bible. He said, go on in. And I spent time there with my father. And I looked at him right in the eyes. And for 85 years, he had a hard heart. He was like a professed Catholic, but he didn't want to know much about God. Actually, he, I got persecuted more by him for my faith than probably anybody else. But God told me to love him and respect him and honor him. And that's what we do to our parents. I looked at him in the eyes and I said to him, Father, God loves you, but you're a sinner and you need to repent. God's got a place for you and it's not where you think you're going. And I led him into this prayer and he said, Amen, I believe. You know, a few hours later he died. Just like that. Died. You don't know your time. You don't know your day. You don't know the hour. Make the choice today. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. And you know what? There, here, here is a, um, a caveat to this verse. He's saying, listen, <laughs> if you do it, he says, your descendants will live. You know what he's saying there? He said, that's where it says in the book of Acts, he says, um, for you and all your households shall be saved. You need to believe in household salvation, that it will come from one place, one person, to the other, then to the kids. I mean, it goes all the way down. And God wants us for this household salvation to come in these last days. And you'll see it. Maybe you've been praying. Maybe you're a Christian. You've been praying for your, your children or you're praying for your spouse and you, or loved ones. And you say, God, I want these people to know you. Well, you know what? Through these times of uncertainty we're living in, maybe today's the day you need to preach. Maybe now is the day that you need to tell them. You know, the Bible says in Romans ten fourteen, it says, how can they believe without a preacher? How can they hear if they've not heard? Think of it. They need to hear. They need for that incorruptible seed to be sown into their hearts that they may believe. Whether they reject you, whether they, they accept it. Listen, the question is, is this. They've heard. It's the message. Now, that message has power behind it because it's the seed, it's the gospel. Uh, um, Romans um, 1.16 For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power of God until salvation. The power of God until salvation. So it's the gospel you preach is the power of God. That makes it pretty clear, doesn't it? So it's not out of your own strength or out of your own ability that you're helping these people. Oh look, I've got to get you saved, this is what you've got to do. No. That's God's job. You're just the messenger boy. So, in verse 20, it says here, and I like this, this is, this is the conclusion of it. He says, that you may love the Lord your God and you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him, hold on to him, stay with him, abide in him, remain with him. For he is your life and the length of your days. You know, in Proverbs chapter 3, it's got an incredible... I've, I've formed a prayer out of it. And it's basically saying that he's, you, you can keep his commandments, uh, his word in your heart and, and obey his commandments. He'll give you long life. He'll give you length of days, prosperity and peace. That's the promise he gives you. And that's what he's saying here. And that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your father, which is Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, to give you, which was, of course, the, the, the promised land, as we know today is Israel. But you know what? You've got your own promised land. And I, tr I truly believe that that promised land for us is to enter into the presence of God, enter into that rest with Him. Because in um, 
Hebrews chapter 4, verses, I think, 7 or 8, it says um, they did not enter into that rest. That You see, that was the old covenant. In the new covenant, the rest, actually, you know what it is? The, the rest is the new covenant. And the new covenant is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in him crucified. That's the new covenant <laughs> with better promises. We're going to enter into this rest with him and say, you know what, Lord? No matter what's going on around me, I trust you, Lord. I just have faith in you. I said, Lord, you love me. You take care of your children. You're a good God. I'll trust in you. It is so simple. I want to just finish with this, and we're going to go, go into the next program with that. Um, and actually, I, I want to read it from um, this translation. And this is one thing that what's needed today in, 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 um, in the world. Uh, and I believe this is the time that it's about to happen. I believe there's the greatest outpouring. This is the last day revival for the church. We're going to see the mighty move of God. And you'll see what will happen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, it's a known verse. And it really talks about repentance. And it says here, And my people who are called by my name, my people, not the Gentiles, the unbelievers, my people, the Christian the saints of God humble themselves humble themselves you know what it is to humble themselves is to turn away from pride that grace may flow into your life that you can seek God with all humility and pray and seek pray and seek what are people praying for they're praying for their shopping list the things that they will like and what they don't have and seek they're seeking for God's hand but not his face they always want God's blessing, but they just seek Him as who He is. Here's the, in the in the, um, in the Amplified, it says, crave, require, as a necessity. I like that. We crave and require that as a necessity in our life. Not a want, but a necessity. What? My face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear them from heaven, and forgive them of their sin, and heal their land. That's it. That's it. That's the key to it, is to repent. Come to God just as you are. Don't try to wash yourself up and clean yourself up. No, it's the blood that does that. The blood of Jesus does that. And through your repentive heart, God will come with his spirit to live inside of you and make you a new creature in Christ that old things have passed away and all things become new in your life. And then God's going to say to you, listen, now's the way to live. This is the way to live. And this is what we're talking about today. You choose life and good, not death and evil. Because that's the way this world's going. Full of death, full of evil. But you can make a choice today. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Saviour. Today's the day I want you just to come in there. And it's so, it's so simple. Just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. God, I've done wrong. Forgive me. I forgive those who have hurt me and I, and I forgive them. But Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Saviour. Deliver me from these bondages I'm in. Set me free, Lord God. Who the Son sets free will, will be free indeed. And you'll see what God will do. Stay tuned for more programs. And I know this is going to be a great blessing to you as we can continue in this, in this series. Today you choose. May God richly bless you. Bye-bye.